The British Army is in for a comprehensive restructuring, with the goal of modernizing and improving its force structure while downsizing at the same time. Among the new formations coming to the British Army is the 1st Deep Recon Strike Brigade Combat Team, which, starting in 2022, is to provide precision fire support and surveillance capabilities to Britain's main warfighting division. In this video, we're going to break down the Deep Recon Strike Brigade, including its broad capabilities, structure, and what it may say about the future of the British Army. If you're interested in the future of Britain's warfighting, then you might also be interested in our sponsor, Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game where you can bring the fight to the shores of up to 128 other players in real time. In Conflict of Nations, you're completely free to choose your strategy, whether you want to be the Hermit Kingdom or the Alliance Leader. And since it's cross-platform, you can play anywhere with the same account on both PC and mobile. We really like how deep the strategic elements of Conflict of Nations are. Persistent games can take weeks to complete, so it's far from superficial. Battle Order viewers get an exclusive deal at the link in the description, including 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription time for free. The offer is only available for 30 days, so click the link, pick your country, and carve your path to victory. When the British government dropped its integrated review in 2021, it outlined two main focuses the army would have to carry into the future. First, it must be persistently engaged around the world in peaceful and low-intensity operations. This means consistent overseas deployments, maintaining rapid reaction forces, and spreading British influence by building the defense capabilities of foreign militaries. These missions will be under the purview of the 16th Air Assault and 1st Aviation Brigade as the primary crisis response team. The 1st UK Division, which will generate light and light mechanized infantry battle groups for rapid deployments and security force assistance units to train partner militaries. As well as the 6th UK Division, with its focus on expeditionary unconventional warfare and information warfare. The Army's second focus is conventional near-peer warfighting. This mission will be the specialty of the mechanized 3rd UK Division, including the Deep Recon Strike Brigade. This division will include two maneuver brigades, a Deep Recon Strike Brigade, Air Defense Group, Engineer Group, Sustainment Brigade, Military Intelligence Component, and a Signals Group. The main maneuver elements will be the 12th and 20th Armored BCTs, which are essentially mechanized brigades with two or three mechanized infantry battalions mounted in Boxer APCs, an Armored Regiment with Challenger 3s, an Armored Cavalry Regiment with Ajax Armored Scout Vehicles, Logistics, Engineers, Maintenance, and Medical Support. For the Americans watching at home, a regiment in the British Cavalry, Armor, and Artillery is actually a battalion-sized element. Each brigade will also have a reserve component to increase resilience by providing casualty replacements and augmentations to the active duty battalions. The 12th Brigade will include two reserve infantry battalions and one reserve armored regiment. The 20th Brigade, meanwhile, will have three reserve infantry battalions. Notably, these maneuver brigades will lack any organic artillery above the battalion level. That capability will be contained within the first Deep Reconnaissance Strike BCT. Deep Recon Strike is a new type of unit for the British Army, bringing together robust armored reconnaissance and a combination of self-propelled howitzers and multiple launch rocket systems. It was created through the merger of parts of the 1st Artillery and 1st Armored Infantry Brigades, and will focus on coordinating fire support deep in the enemy's rear. As the recon component, the brigade will have two armored cavalry regiments, the Household Cavalry Regiment and the Royal Lancers. Both are currently equipped with the CVRT tracked reconnaissance vehicles, although the plan is to equip them with the new Ajax Scout Vehicle if that program can be recovered. The brigade will also have the 1st Queen's Dragoon Guards, a light cavalry regiment equipped with Jackal 2 wheeled vehicles. They will be supported by the Reserve Royal Yeomanry, also equipped with jackals. Meanwhile, the strike capability is provided by a large contingent of artillery. This will include two AS-90 self-propelled artillery regiments, as well as two rocket artillery regiments. 
These regiments will be equipped with M270 MLRS and Exactor 2s, a long-range version of the Spike providing a precision ground-to-ground -ground missile capability. These units will be supported by a Target Acquisition Regiment, Engineer and Maintenance Battalion, Reserve MLRS Regiment, and Reserve Light Gun Regiment. This new structure is interesting for a number of reasons. First, as far as reconnaissance and security goes, it gives a lot to the division. The stated rationale is that recon and deep fires will have a symbiotic relationship. You can't shoot what you can't see, especially with precision weapons, and degrading the enemy by targeting forces and infrastructure in his rear can do a lot to reduce future casualties on the front. The MLRS and exactors will fill this role centralized at the division level. Meanwhile, the Howitzer regiments will likely directly support the two armored brigades, as has been done in the past. But the Deep Recon Strike Brigade gives the 3rd Division a mixture of fires and surveillance capabilities that were once core level capabilities for the British. During the Cold War, the 1st Corps' three divisional cavalry regiments would be pooled to protect the Corps as a whole. By contrast, the artillery component is not exactly unorthodox. The 3rd Division had most of these units under the 1st Artillery Brigade, but the number of recon units in the division is fairly large and there was a conscious choice to group them with the artillery. In fact, the 3rd Division effectively has as many active cavalry units as it does active infantry. But taking a look at what cavalry does could reveal something deeper about the British Army's priorities. Cavalry, when employed as a screen, conserves the division's main combat power, providing early warning of enemy activity and allowing the commander to deploy his forces at a time and place of his choosing. It may also enable ground forces to leverage their comparative advantages in air power and precision fires more effectively. Britain's rationale states that greater firepower means greater protection, and disrupting the enemy as far away as possible with weapons that hit what's actually important is definitely a way to compensate for a smaller force. This combination of capabilities is at least conceptually consistent with the doing more with less attitude that the British Army has had to pursue. At the same time, the actual number of cavalry regiments in the division may be immaterial if it's just generating battalion battlegroups for piecemeal operations. In this case, only a portion of the division deploys, and only with what it needs for a given mission. But assuming the division deploys as a whole, as it seems to be designed to do, I suggest that the Deep Recon Strike Brigade provides the 3rd Division with an outsized recon security and fires capability that can adequately support a core-sized element like the Allied Rapid Reaction Corps, a British-led NATO response force that has relationships with 5 divisions from multiple countries. Alternatively, excess armored cavalry could act as a mobile reserve for the division commander. After all, the 3rd Division's maneuver strength is being downsized from 8 active infantry battalions to 5. Dropping to 2 maneuver brigades could pose problems for the Division's resilience and its ability to maintain a proper tactical reserve. Using recon elements as a reserve can be considered as misuse, since if they're being kept in reserve, they're not doing their primary job of finding the enemy and providing early warning. But it's something that often has to happen out of necessity. At the same time, this could turn out to be a non-issue in a real war if the division is reinforced with infantry units from the 1st UK Division. As has been a common theme during times of austerity, the argument is being made that technology can compensate for decreases in manpower. The refocus on deep precision firepower, electronic and cyber warfare capabilities, and training foreign militaries to fight in lieu of high-profile British commitment are force multiplication strategies that can maximize the British Army's finite resources. But it remains to be seen how these changes will play out in practice, or if the 3rd Division will actually ever fight a peer conflict. Thanks again to Conflict of Nations for supporting what we do. For the next 30 days, you can get a big leg up with 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free at the link in the description. So don't miss out.